These kids play for keeps and they're about to show you why. Back to back weeks in Townsville. It's Best versus Feeney. And Feeney may be slightly with his nose in front. Ojeda, another good start. Seaton putting the pressure on. From that second row, oh man, that was aggressive from Jaden Ojeda. And even more aggressive was the block from Feeney. And so he sends it all the way to the inside. Oh, Ojeda looked at the outside at one. That didn't work, so he went for the inside at two. Did he get it pulled up enough? Best has got a better run off two than Ojeda. He's going to have a look up the inside into turn three. And Ojeda straight away covers the door. So Feeney back to third. That was nearly the all-time move. One of the best aggression plays from Jaden Ojeda. Didn't quite work out, though. Well, nearly. It worked for about 20 metres. Just as you said, a bit too much momentum. Couldn't get it stopped at turn two. But Sip slows it up very much through eight. Nash Morris gets a great run, just gets to his rear bumper. That's Archie. Sipped around. This is big. How did he get away with that? I have never seen a car do a full 360, not touch the wall, not get collected, grab first gear and take off again at the exit of turn 10. Wow. And the smoke screen that it sent up. Using the strength of his car, which has got good drive traction, and that also looks after the tyre, the way you drive the car like that. So it's good for lap speed right now, and it's also good for tyre consistency. So as long as he's accurate, as long as he's neat, he can keep that up, it's looking good so far for Zach Best. in here behind Dick Fraser. Declan keeps it on the racing line down here at turn two. A little bit of a rub and a touch through the mid part of the corner. Keeping that pressure on. Bremer group entry on the curb to turn three. So he's put a local support from last week to get him back on track. Some local companies lending a hand to even fabricate and build some parts for Zane Morse to get him back here. And for Declan Fraser, the left-hand side of that car peeled back last night. His own dad getting the fabrication tools out to rebuild the car, which is pretty cool, as well as the Matt White guys who were left to work on the mechanical side of it. A couple of very well presented Ford Falcons duking it out, and there's still that Anderson car locking up. Oh, oh and there's the bent steering yeah, that Charlie was talking about. I don't think it's bent anymore. No, it's broken. That's broken steering, so Charlie told us from the lane the team knew that steering was bent, but has failed now. I hope Michael Anderson doesn't go too fast here because that has got a bent steering arm. It's OK when he's got load on it from the throttle, but as soon as he backs off, the steering's going to go weird on him. You can see it dangling yeah, beneath the car. Yeah, just needs to slow it right down. Slow it right down. We do not need any more damage to this car than just one bent steering arm. There you go. And it's got to stop. Got to slow it up. It's not going to turn. Whoa. Nearly found the uh, Swift X fence down there at turn two. New sponsor to the sport that's come on this week is pushing on with it. This is uh, this is nerve wracking for the Kenwood Holmes Falcon. It's gone from being a bent steering arm to a disconnected steering arm. Yeah, you're right, Chad. You can see it dangling underneath the left front of the car. There it is. So. It's meant to be connected to the front upright that that wheel's connected to. He's going to set some kind of broken steering lap record. Yeah, it is. He is. Now it's... White flag is for the field on approach to let them know that there is a slow vehicle on the track. You're watching in America. So these are our race leaders, the leaders. These are our race leaders, so Whoa. we need to be very careful here. Anderson's offline, but he ends up right online there at the exit of turn 10. And you need all the row. Jordan Boys just gets around. Best survives another lap. Three to go. Interestingly, he turned his headlights off on that last lap, Zach Best. Feeney with a flash of the headlights, just letting the lapper know that he's coming through. Three laps to go. And this would just give Zach Best not just a little bit of an edge in terms of some championship points, but a world of confidence as well. If it stays the way it is, Brock Feeney is doing enough to win the round. So to finish Feeney, best Ojeda for the round. Oh, I'd put the calculator away, Chad. We'll wait till this one plays out because I still think there's a bit to go with this one with two and a half a go. This is going to be cool. Brock Feeney with a chance to, if he is going to win the round, potentially do it on the maximum point score, just like he did last week. So for best, what he needs to do now, not there's no more worry about tyre life. Don't think about the tyre. Just drive this car as fast as you can for the next two and a half laps. And what it will be, will be 
Make no mistakes. Be nice and neat and accurate. The cars are moving around in the braking zone, so don't overdrive the entries. Really focus on the exit. Beanie off the throttle for a long time. It's down at turn 13, and Jordan Boys, who was fourth, has slowed up at turn 11, slowing right up. Now at turn 12, does he get back to the lane? Pit entry's just around the corner here. And he'll get into the pit access road. Does he actually get to the lane? It doesn't look like he's got any power there. So that's a strange one for Jordan Boys and a disappointing one as well. He was inside the top five. And with just two laps to go, he's out of steam. Back to the leaders. The three and a half seconds up the road from Jada No Jada. Jack Best having the drive of his very short career so far. Looking nice and composed behind the wheel. Nice and smooth with his steering inputs. Here's Jaden Ojeda, back in third. As you said, Chad, he'll be third for the round if he can hold that hit spot. Hasn't had the answer for the two leaders, and there's Boy, so he rolled it into the pit lane, so that's out of harm's way. And I'd have to say, Zach Best would be pretty happy about that. Now, Feeney's run it in too hot to turn 11 and had big understeer. So his mommy's daddy's sister stuck back in Vanilla cheering him on today. Watching on the TV. And is this the moment for Zach Best? Half a lap to go over a second clear of Brock Feeney, who has thrown everything that he possibly could at the young tick for driver today. The confidence that Zach Best will take from this drive will be immeasurable. Feeney may have had the faster car at phases of this race, but Zach Best has managed his race better and done a great job of using the strengths of his car, made minimal mistakes and maximised the opportunity. Brock drove that car in this championship last year, so he knows it well, but not quite well enough to get around him. It's the car that Mark Winterbottom drove to both the race wins here in 2015. And in 2021, it's Zach Best with the best moment of his career. A win in Super 2 that he will savour. He got the win at Bathurst, but he didn't get that moment of crossing the chequered flag first. And for Raymond Lau, that's a sweet moment. He's engineer. A high five with Tim Edwards, the team boss down there at Tickford. And Tickford are doubling up their wins here this weekend. And for Blake Fardell, he's stayed within 15 seconds. Just, yeah, he's nine seconds down the road from Nash Morris. So Nash Morris with a 15 second time penalty hanging over his head. So Fardell, will cross the line second in Super 3, but will take out the race win. And I'll be happy with that. Great couple of weekends of racing on the streets of Townsville for our Super 3 competitors. Nash Morris had plenty of speed, but Blake Fardell played it nicely. He crosses the line. Nice result. Nash Morris will only lose, I believe, the one spot with that 15 second penalty. So should do enough to hold on to the round win. Feeney wins the round in Super 2. Morris wins the round. Potentially, we'll just wait for clarification on those results, but it's Best who wins the round. Oh, sorry, Best who wins the race, I should say, in Super 2. Well done, Zach Best. Brock Feeney second, pushed him all the way. Jaden Ojeda third. And again, Brock Feeney maximising the points this weekend, extending that championship lead over Zach Best. Andrew Mazzura is a nice job inside the top five. You know that, Jack Perkins. Matt McLean should be top rookie once again. That'll make three straight, I believe, for Matt.